In the last couple of videos I did, we talked about capacitors in series. So the nice thing about capacitors in series, in this particular case, these are uh, super capacitors here. They're only rated for 2.7 volts. And I want to charge them in this circuit that I talked about a couple of videos ago to 4.3 volts. So we have the 5 volt power supply and a rectifier diode here which is going to block about 0.7 volts. So ultimately the voltage to the load here, the resistor in the LED, is going to get to 4.3 volts from the power supply dropped by the rectifier diode as I said and then the voltage across the resistor and the series capacitors is going to get to 4.3 volts of course that's under ideal conditions so worst case scenario if we charge these up to 4.3 volts is one of them will hit the 2.7 of course worst case is that it exceeds that you don't want to exceed that but a somewhat acceptable upper uh, voltage imbalance so a uh, upper level of charge I should have been more clear on that when you're charging them uh, worst case scenario if you get 4.3 volts without damaging either of them is that one will be 2.7 volts and one will be 1.6 volts and of course if you discharge them once one hits zero volt you have to stop discharging that's bad you really want to avoid that too and that would mean the other one because we have an LED that would block it from discharging it should stop the current at about 1.6 volts still this something you should avoid but it's something that is you know the worst case scenario you could let happen so generally you add a safety margin so luckily for this video to uh, test out these two super capacitors so I didn't try to balance any super capacitors to begin with, but as you can see here we got 1.077 volts and we could measure this backwards. We would just get a negative number. In fact I did. For some reason I thought uh, the polarities were different. But in any case we have uh, 1.076 volts on this one. So that's good enough to say they're the exact same voltage. So now for my testing I was going to use that circuit but instead I think I will just use the uh, bench power supply because I want to see how close these are to each other in value plus I want to actually get a good idea hopefully good idea of the actual capacitance of both of these. So this one I'm going to have where the uh, positive side of the power supply goes there and this one I want where the uh, negative side of the power supply will go there. So I just connected them in series and might as well take this voltage measurement again. I did this a bunch in the last video but in case you didn't see it or whatnot, you can see that uh, we still have the uh, 1.07 volts there and the 1.07 volts there. But now that they're in series their voltages add up so when we attach the power supply it's gonna see two volts across the uh, two of them and if we attach a load to it it's also gonna see 2.15 uh, volts of a uh, power supply voltage so we got twice the voltage because they're equally charged and they are in series so next thing I'm gonna do is take the bench power supply and I should have got the alligator clips ready a little sooner but we're going to charge these two super capacitors right there so it's uh, 3.31 volts the meter or the bench power supply says 3.2 so I'm gonna tone that down a little bit and uh, let's actually go let's go to uh, 3.15 there we go. So it's not an exact uh, piece of equipment there, but we're going to raise the voltage of these two supercapacitors by one volt and I'm going to time it. So if we had a single capacitor and we changed its voltage by one volt, the number of seconds that it takes if we charge it at one amp would give us the capacitance. 
since there's two of them, it'll be uh, about half the capacitance if they're equal value capacitors. They should charge equally if they're equal capacitance, so we'll look at that. And uh, first off, we should make sure we're getting one amp of current through this. So I'm going to unhook this and set the meter to measure current. Now the meter is set to measure current. There's uh, some things to be aware of though. First off, we're in the amp spot. With this meter can measure up to 20 amps. Also, the power supply limits current. And so it will only output about 3 amps of current. And you don't really want to continuously run current through a meter anyways. But I have the current set almost completely down so we'll probably only get maybe like a hundred milli amps or something 0.1 amps there we go 0 0.05 amps so I really have it uh, set down so I already dialed in the voltage and we're going to raise the amount of current the meter or the power supply will output and that's the most current that it will output and the only voltage that it will output is uh, what did we set it to uh, about uh, 3.15 I believe so there we go we got the amps there and let's double check the so it's pretty much spot on one amp and let's double check the voltage now since we made some changes so I made sure to set the meter to voltage last thing you want to do is accidentally measure current when you want to measure voltage you're probably not ever going to ruin the meter when you measure voltage there is a fuse if you accidentally put too much current the fuse blows hopefully that will be the only damage but still it's not fun to replace the fuse I have blown the fuse in this and uh, had to replace it uh, not terrible but it's not the most fun either but in any case let's check the voltage here that's coming from the power supply so we're still at about 3.15 and let's uh, check again the voltage of the super capacitors which should be about one volt left less so there we go 2.15 so we're going to charge it from 2.15 to 3.15 volts and so now I have an online stopwatch ready to go and so as soon as I connect the uh, positive jumper I'm going to click the button for the online stopwatch these will start charging looks like it wants to tug it forward and make sure I got the in the right spot so there we go we got a connection I got the stopwatch going and doesn't look like it's feeding it a full amp so for some reason which uh, which is bad it should be giving it a full amp we already set it to an amp. So it looks like we have more internal resistance here, or resistance somewhere. There you can see it's 3.14 volts. If I turn the power supply off though, it uh, drops quite a bit. We shouldn't have that. So the power supply is encountering more resistance than I expected. These are cheap capacitors, they're kind of old. They got tossed around. That may uh, be some of the problem. But unfortunately, this uh, experiment to measure its capacitance didn't work because I didn't get it one amp of current. It was like a 0.3 amps of current, and now it is going down. But still, we will uh, keep charging them and until they are charged and see how balanced they are afterwards because they're still usable. They're just obviously not uh, the best super capacitors to use for serious projects and now it looks like the power supply is providing about uh, 50 milliamps of current these have quite a bit of leakage so they're probably about fully charged it'll probably keep putting current through them but there you can see we have 3.15 volts across them and we can cut the power supply off from them and uh, it dropped a little bit so they were probably charging a, a little bit more but in uh, any case there you can see we got three volts across them so we would expect since they started at the same voltage if they have the same capacitance that each one would be 1.5 <clears throat> so that makes the math real easy 
let's measure this one. This one's actually 1.26 volts, and uh, this one, of course, will have the difference. There we go, of uh, 1.75 volts. So we ended up with a situation like this. This one's voltage rose faster. That tells me it has less capacitance. Whereas this one has more capacitance because they received the same amount of current. Even though it ended up not being one amp a current, whatever the current was that went through them was equal because they were in series. And a little bit of resistance is all it takes to throw that off because you realize at uh, one volt, one ohm of resistance limits uh, current to one amp. So this uh, power supply could only provide one volt or one amp of current to one ohm of resistance. So maybe we had two or three ohms of resistance somewhere. And so unfortunately we couldn't set the current because the resistance was slightly higher, but still. Uh, we did we did okay on this test. We saw that one charge to a higher voltage than the other So we would have to stop charging them if we decided to use them as a power supply a Backup power supply somewhere. We would have to make sure no matter what we do that uh, Once one reaches 2.7 volts, we're not charging them anymore And then we should even lower that voltage a little bit more. So in any case I kind of had to uh, rush through this you uh, only get one chance to shoot a lot of this footage and uh, so hopefully I can make a better video on these topics in the future but hopefully it still made sense to you uh, super capacitors and capacitors in series are tricky and basically you just want to not charge them uh, near their uh, maximum you want to leave a safety margin and realize that they won't charge equally so one may be getting to a dangerous level and either while well charging or while well discharging and so you want to stop charging or discharging them well before that 